NASA's James Webb Telescope, which is thought of as a pioneer in science, has made another important discovery about an extrasolar planet that people thought they could live on. Recent research has shown that the rocky world that orbits the planet called TRAPPIST-1 has no atmosphere. This strange alien rock planet goes around a star called TRAPPIST-1 in the same way that Earth goes around the Sun. This discovery is sad because it kills any hope that there might be life on this cool planet. Let me tell you about this new thing that the James Webb Telescope found. A group of scientists from all over the world used NASA's James Webb Space Telescope to measure the temperature of the rocky extrasolar planet TRAPPIST-1b. The calculation is based on the planet's thermal emission, which is the transfer of heat energy in the form of infrared light. Webb's mid-infrared sensor was used to measure the thermal emission the results show that the planet's day side has a temperature of about 500 kelvins, which is about 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and that it doesn't have much of an atmosphere. This is the first time that light has been seen coming from a rocky exoplanet that's about the same size and temperature as the planets in our own solar system. This result is an important step in the process of figuring out if planets that orbit small active stars like TRAPPIST-1 can keep atmospheres that are needed for life. This is a good sign for Webb's ability to use MIRI to learn about temperate exoplanets about the size of Earth. Thomas Green, an astrophysicist at NASA's Ames Research Center and the study's lead author said, these discoveries really take advantage of Webb's mid-infrared capability. No earlier telescopes have had the sensitivity to measure such weak light in the mid-infrared, the researcher said. Planets with rough surfaces that orbit ultra-cool red dwarfs Early in 2017, astronomers announced they'd found seven rocky planets orbiting an ultra-cool red dwarf star, also called an M-dwarf, which is about 40 light-years away from Earth. One of the most interesting things about these planets is that they're about the same size and mass as the rocky planets near the center of our own solar system. Even though they all orbit their tiny star much closer than any of our planets orbit the Sun, all of them could fit comfortably within Mercury's orbit. They all get about the same amount of energy from it. The TRAPPIST-1b planet is the closest to the Sun. Its orbital distance is about one-tenth that of Earth, and it gets about four times as much energy from the Sun as Earth does. Its orbit is about 100 times closer to it than Earth's is. Even though it's outside the system's habitable zone, observations of the planet can still teach us about the planets and its family and the planets in other M-dwarf systems. Green says that there are 10 times as many of these stars in the Milky Way as there are stars like the Sun, and that they're twice as likely to have rocky planets as stars like the Sun. Elsa Ducrow, a co-author from the French Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission, who was part of the team that studied the TRAPPIST-1 system before, said, It's easier to describe terrestrial planets that orbit smaller, cooler stars. The TRAPPIST-1 system is a great place to test ideas about whether or not there could be life near M stars. If we want to learn more about the atmospheres of rocky planets, these are the best places to look. Finding an atmosphere to detect, or not. Earlier scans of TRAPPIST-1b with the Hubble and Spitzer space telescopes didn't find any signs of a puffy atmosphere on the planet, but they also couldn't say for sure that it had a dense atmosphere. It would be helpful to measure the temperature of the planet. This would help reduce some of the uncertainty. Pierre-Olivier Lagage from CEA, who was also a co-author on the article, said, This planet is locked in place by its tides. This means that one side of the planet is always facing the star and the other side is always in the dark, he said. The researchers used a method called secondary eclipse photometry, which involved MIRI measuring how the brightness of the system changed as the planet moved in front of the star. If it has an atmosphere to move the heat around and redistribute it, the day side will be cooler than if it doesn't have an atmosphere, the scientists said. If there's nothing going on, even though the TRAPPIST-1b doesn't get hot enough to make its own visible light, infrared light can be seen coming from the planet. They were able to figure out how much infrared light the planet gives off by taking the brightness of the star during the secondary eclipse and subtracting it from the brightness of the star and planet together. This gave them a way to figure out how much infrared light the planet gives off. The Analysis of Very Slight Variations in Brightness The fact that Webb was able to find a secondary eclipse is a big deal in and of itself. The star is more than 1,000 times brighter than the planet, so the difference in brightness is less than 0.1%. There was also a chance that we wouldn't be able to see the eclipse. 
Taylor Bell, a postdoctoral researcher at the Bay Area Environmental Research Institute who was in charge of analyzing the data, said that the orbits are not perfect because the planets are all pulling on each other. The researchers looked at the information they got from five different people who saw a second eclipse. But it was really amazing. The time of the eclipse we saw in the data was within a couple of minutes of what we expected, said one member of the team. Ducrow added, We compared the results to computer models that showed what the temperature should be in different situations. The model showed how hot or cold it should be in different situations. The results are pretty close to making sense for a black body made of bare rock with no atmosphere to help heat move around. This research was done as part of the Web Guaranteed Time Observation or GTO program 1177. This is one of eight programs from Webb's first year of science that are meant to help fully characterize the TRAPPIST-1 system. We also didn't see any signs that carbon dioxide was taking in light, which would have been clear from these measurements. More secondary eclipse observations of TRAPPIST-1b are being done right now, and now that the team knows how accurate the data can be, they're working toward the goal of getting a full phase curve that shows how the brightness changes over the whole orbit. They'll be able to tell if the planet has an atmosphere by looking at how the temperature changes from day to night on the planet. Lagage, who worked on making the Miri device for more than 20 decades, said, There was one goal I always wanted to reach. I dreamed about it, he said next. That was what I'd hoped for. This one in particular. We've never been able to figure out what a rocky, temperate planet like this one is giving off before. It's a huge step forward in the search for planets outside of our own solar system. Most people agree that the James Webb Space Telescope is the most advanced space observatory ever built. Webb will look into the mysterious structure and origins of our universe as well as our place in it. He'll also solve mysteries in our solar system and try to find out more about planets that orbit other stars that are farther away. Webb is an international project that NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency are working on together. The MIRI instrument was planned and made by a group of European institutes working with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the University of Arizona. This group is called the MIRI European Consortium. NASA and the European Space Agency work together on MIRI. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.